For decades, Petworth Chapel in Sussex has been left abandoned in the corner of a now disused cemetery alongside Horsham Road. Originally built in the mid-1800s by Lord Leaconfield of nearby Petworth House, the chapel was also used as a mortuary until its closure along with the graveyard in 1947. In modern times, stories of ghosts haunting the grounds and chapel have surfaced, with many believing that these tales could be linked to a tragedy that occurred on the 29th September 1942. A lone German bomber, a Junkers 88, approached overhead its target, Petworth House, which at the time was home to three army camps containing over 3,500 personnel, as well as several hundred vehicles. The bombs dropped, but all missed their targets, one of which was deflected off a tree and landed in nearby Petworth's boys' school. Of the 80 children at school that day, 23 lost their lives, along with 30 being seriously injured. Along with the children, the explosion also took the life of the headmaster, Charles Stevenson, who had taught at the school for many years and was also the organist at the local church. Charlotte Marshall, a teaching assistant, was another victim from the school. A nearby laundry was also badly damaged, killing Eva Streeter, who was working there at the time, and injuring several others. Many of the locals, as well as the fire brigade and Canadian soldiers from Petworth House, worked tirelessly in recovering survivors and bodies of the dead, which continued through to the next day, the remains of the victims and rubble even being thrown as far away as a park on the other side of the road. On top of the initial death toll, the bodies of a further seven children were never found and presumed dead. The tragedy shook the village of Petworth to its core. Being an extremely tight-knit community where almost everyone knew everyone, there was not a single soul who was not affected by the bombing. On the 3rd of October 1942, 32 residents of Petworth were buried in a mass grave in Horsham Road Cemetery, a procession of Canadian army lorries carrying the coffins to the graveside, where a funeral service was led by Bishop Bell of Chichester. Newspaper reports from the time state that among the wreaths were many inscribed to my best friend. A mother dropped a single red rose into her son's coffin. Fathers and mothers of the boys follow the coffin to the grave in the lovely countryside graveyard. In a village so small, almost everyone was related to at least one of the dead. So this here is the mass grave where most of the boys from the bombing as well as a few teachers are actually buried. Now among many things it's obviously incredibly incredibly sad to think and I find it very strange as well that all of these boys had they not died in the bombing they would by now in 21 have lived a, a long life um, and yeah it's, it's horrible to think what they went through and the way it shook the village of Petworth. Obviously dealing with the paranormal, we are dealing with people and we're dealing with history, and this is obviously very recent history as well. So I, I, I don't want to comment too much on whether the, the sightings of ghosts are in any way linked with this. However, you've got to think there was a huge, huge tragedy that did occur in this village. And being the chapel and the community graveyard was obviously a hub of the community at that particular time. So whether there is kind of any link, I don't know. Um, but I, I certainly just don't want to under, undermine the importance and the sadness of, of what actually happened here. I mean, what do you guys think? So, I mean, I'm quite, obviously being a mother, it is quite a sad thing to think about. You know, all, all the things that the parents went through on losing their children and the fact that you've got the teachers buried here as well, which is... Like, yeah. I mean, the thing is that the bomber was never aiming for the school. They were aiming for the nearby house. And the oh, thing, and the thing that makes it even sadder is how would that German pilot have felt yeah. knowing that he's he's bombed the school, by, albeit by mistake. But yeah, there's not one part of the story that isn't tragic. Aside from the paranormal, it's also our job. I see it in a way of telling history and telling stories. And I think that is, you know, what I what I want to do here is, is tell this story and, and let people know. It's an, it's an interesting one as well because we don't usually deal with mass children's graves. That's the first first place that we've been that's had like a large number of young people yeah. that have all been buried in one place as well. Like It's quite unusual that they're all in one plot. The things as well, that why I say I don't know if there is any link to the hauntings with the, the bombing, but you've got to think there was all of those lives that were snuffed out in a moment and that was just round the corner from the chapel here. 
the school was actually in the housing estate which backs onto the chapel so oh, right. we're yeah a, a short walk away um so yeah whether you know it's difficult to say whether there's any ties but maybe we can communicate with with somebody here tonight and see um if there are any links Today, the only part of the graveyard that is maintained is the mass grave and memorial, and due to an ongoing debate about who actually owns the land, the rest has been left overgrown and abandoned, open for nature to reclaim it. It's in the last few years that visitors to the cemetery have experienced what they believe to be paranormal events. A number of people have reported hearing the sound of children playing in the graveyard, with even a few claiming to have seen what looks like the figures of children running between the weathered graves. Although we can't draw any real connection, is there a possibility that these spirits are linked to the deaths from the bombing that occurred on that fateful day on September 1942? Another ghost said to frequent the area is that of a former sexton or groundskeeper for the chapel and graveyard. His voice has been heard by a number of people and is believed to be keeping a watch over the chapel to this very day. And the thing that really interested me about this place was I saw a, a video from Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations who investigated here last year and they brought along a full spectrum camera. Now for those of you who don't know, full spectrum cameras have the filters on them removed so they can view UV light infrared light as our night vision cameras do as well as visible light and the idea is that um, paranormal events or spiritual energies can be witnessed within these light spectrums that we can't see of our own eyes so they took a number of photos in the chapel and there were three that came out that were extremely interesting they appear to have captured what looks like the partial manifestation of a spirit I've analysed the photos and I, I can't really work out what could have caused that kind of an anomaly. If something's in front of the camera, something's in front of the lens, you'd expect it to be coming from the edge of the frame, um, whereas this manifests itself you know, right in the middle of the frame, which is very unusual. I can't really think of a way that anything could have caused that. Um, we have actually gone and got ourselves a sp full spectrum camera, which we're going to be using tonight, and see if we can try and capture a similar anomaly on camera. Good news, whilst we were in the area, I've actually found another place, uh, not too far away, it's about a 20 minute drive, that is also supposed to be haunted. It's called the Benham School. Um, now, there's, there's very little information. It was a, a, a chapel at one point, and I think it was also used as a Sunday school, but in recent times, there are people that have said they feel very uneasy being there. Um, and since it's not far away, I thought, why not go there for a little investigation? Yeah, definitely, sounds good to me. Yeah. Let's get on the road and then we'll come back here and uh, do the full investigation at, at Petworth Chapel and Cemetery. Yeah, it's a strange place to put one, to be honest. It's got a yeah, I don't, I don't know why it was um, abandoned. I wonder if there might have been a fire or something. This place is really weird. <laughs> it's um, certainly got some creepy kind of feelings. I definitely know what people mean when they say they come here and it feels like they don't feel yeah. too comfortable here. Like the first literally like 20 seconds of us being in this bit, it was like, wow, this is some next yeah. level like creepy. Yeah, it's such, I mean, there's not a lot of it, but it just feels really kind of, I don't know, spooky is the only word. Is, is it because it's in the middle of, of the forest, like literally in the middle of nowhere, up a dirt track? Yeah, that's like, the thing. It's, it is, so it's so isolated. We've passed, what, one cyclist since yeah. we've been up here. Literally. Yeah. So um, there's like a house or something just down the hill there. But, but it's literally at the bottom of the It's down hill. the side, yeah. Yeah, I think we've definitely got to do a bit of an investigation here. T to me, it looks 
like I can picture it as a Sunday school, you know, all the the like little desks separate and like I actually feel slightly more creeped out here than at the other place. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's just kids getting darker, but I feel like I've got more of that feeling like turn around we're gonna see something. Yeah. I I don't know what you mean, like I'm waiting for something to pop up out the windows or something. I'll just like, the windows. Literally. I keep thinking I'm sitting in that doorway back there. And every time I keep looking that way I keep getting a sort of very, very slight sort of chill. Yeah. I certainly think it's got potential. And I say there is reports of although very vague reports, there are apparently have been sightings and experiences here. Myself and Sophie return to the car to retrieve our night vision cameras. However, upon our return, James and Lauren relayed a very strange experience to us. What happened? Yeah, we had the strangest thing happening. Like, I was standing here, and I was standing there, and we were just in the complete dark talking, and then there was like static everywhere in the church. How do you mean you could hear it? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it sounded like you, if you put like a vinyl, like a record on, That's and it's just that like, like before it's really? any sound, but everywhere, popping everywhere, and then you you could hear it over in this corner. It was behind me. You thought there was water running underneath here, and then like, it was like building for a bit, and it sounded like actual like, like walking Seriously? around in here on the mud. It was really weird. Can you enter this environment with us if you're here? Can you hear like... I think that's bats or birds or something. Yeah. But it wasn't, it was close, a lot closer than that. Is that outside? Is that outside? That was like straight up the sound of someone walking along. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it, yeah. Sounded like it was just outside here. Yeah. We all heard the distinctive sound of footsteps on the outside of the building, so I decided to take a walk around the perimeter to ensure that we were indeed alone at the chapel. There's no one out here, yeah. That's what I mean, it sounded like it was just outside yeah. here, but there's there's no one here. There's, um, I mean, there's the bank which has got shrubbery on, but it sounded like footsteps. If someone's out this time, like, this dark, do you, see, do you think they're going to Oh, boy! What? Holy fuck. What? What? I'm not even kidding, like a massive like black shadow just walked past that window. In front of me? Yeah. This side of the wall? No, no. Shh, shh, shh. Other side of the wall, No, we're getting the same regions as inside. So is this window where I'm standing now? Right. Where, where you were standing there, a ma like a big black shadow figure walked from this side towards you. Yeah. And then as soon as I reacted, it sort of went back again and disappeared. But it was like big, like someone hunched over with a cloak. Or That's interesting. Well, you can see how tall I am. This is 
I can hear something. Is there anybody outside the chapel? Did James just see you? I can hear you moving about in there and around us. Can you hear us or see us? Whilst outside, no further activity occurred, so I joined the rest of the team inside where we began to experience even more unusual activity. Did you used to go to school here? Some insects. Oh yeah. Come here. Did you smell it? I can smell it, I swear. Yeah. Did you smell it? People are just... yeah. It's what leaves. Definitely incense. Yeah, I definitely spell. I can't smell it. Definitely like. smell incense just now. Sophie, <laughs> you're the beam with the eye on the wrong side facing uh, towards you. No. What's that? Pigeons. Yeah, that's wildlife. Can you move around in here if you're with us so we can hear you? I mean, presumably, there's a chapel that have had some kind of had that candles or something. Uh, what are called? A sensor thing. Yeah, I know what you mean, oh. yeah. Is it back? Yeah, it just meant again. Yes, 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 yes. That's so weird, though. It's just, like, in the air. I smelled it at that time. But only brief. Just for a second, yeah. Just, like, there's a little pocket of it floating around. It's, I mean, I'd say, I mean, there is a house down there, I'd say it's maybe firewood burning, but one, how bloody hot has it been today? Mm. Who's going to be burning the fire? <clears throat> and, like, even if it was firewood, it's not a firewood smell, mm. and even if they had incense, it wouldn't carry up here in pockets. Yeah, sort of. Well, it's like you'd, you'd if it was smoke from something, you smell the smoke, like, constant, constant. Yeah. unless the wind changes direction. Well, what? Move back and forth again? It looked like, it might have been there. I don't know, it looked like something whizzed past the doorway. Outside, outside again? Outside, yeah. See, it's weird I, I that stuff's... I don't think it was your... In this area, yeah. Right or not. I don't think it was... I'm sure. Yeah. And they didn't yeah. think they like, walk along. But it was just, just like a the quick shadow, like a... Yeah. That's what made me think of the camera. If, if you're outside, you haven't got to be shy, you can come in with us. We're in your space, I understand that. But you don't need to worry, you can come in. I'm going to go outside because there seems to be a lot going on around the edges. It's almost, I mean, I wonder if it's like we've kind of pushed them out kind of thing Maybe. and they're just going around the perimeter. Yeah, yeah, or cane or something. Yeah. It moved so quickly because it went from up there and then it was over there within seconds. Yeah. So I th at first I thought it was someone on a bike. It was like a funny pedal sound, but then it would just see the light or something. No, it wasn't a bike. It moved too quick anyway. You would have heard it as a bike sound as well. Yeah. There was like a force behind it. Yeah, go lights out again, because I felt that was building to something. It's so weird, every time I put lights out, it's like, I feel the static started up, it all sort of Well, I've even turned the LCD screen off, so... 
It's pitch black. After a while, the tense atmosphere and all strange activity at the chapel subsided, and with time pushing on, we decided to return to the graveyard in Petworth for the main investigation of the evening. So we've just arrived at um, the, the graveyard in Petworth. We've set up a locked off camera actually inside the chapel with a REM pod, so hopefully we might catch something on that or something interacting with the, with the REM pod. Um, there's a few houses that literally back right onto the graveyard itself, so we're going to have to be a little bit quiet, keeping our voices down and not shining bright lights around everywhere, but yeah, as long as we're aware of that. Um, James suggested we maybe start at the bottom of the graveyard and just work our way up to see if we, we feel anything on the way up there. And uh, seeing as the graveyard itself is so big, I think at some point we might end up splitting up into twos maybe, two in the chapel, two investigating the graveyard, just to make the most of, seeing we've got four of us here, uh, make the most of it. But, um, I'm fairly confident, especially after our visit to the, the Bedham School, mm. that was slightly surprising. So, yeah, on to the big one of the night. Let's go. <clears throat> Headmaster teachers and boys who lost their lives when Petworth Boys School was bombed on 29th of September 1942. Yeah, What's his name? The headmaster. Headmaster teacher. Headmaster, are you here? Plane sounds are spooky. So he might be Walter then. Huh? He might be Walter. Oh yeah. We don't mean you any harm in any way. We just want to try and communicate with you. I've learned and some people have said that you tried to save a lot of the boys from the bomb. It's a very brave and noble thing of you to do. Was that? Someone else. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be some noises from the houses. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, you can probably see on the camera a little bit. They're, they're not far away, the houses. They're just over there. I want you to know, Alice, Headmaster, any any of the boys that are here, like you're not forgotten to this very day. There's a memorial here. People still talk about you. The village of Petworth and the rest of the country still remember you. And I hope that's the way that it will stay forever. It's still really weird thinking that that happens literally just, just over, over there. there, yeah. Literally pretty much where you've parked the car. That's what I mean, there's like, like all those, whatever, 30 to 40 people just in an instant all gone at the same time with yeah. like no warning or anything. Strangely enough, I think like this bit of the graveyard is probably more, it feels more at peace, even though it's not very, not to be a dig, but like even though it's not very well attended, like as far as, you can see it sort of deteriorated a little bit over time. Like there's no flowers in any of the things. Yeah. The ones that are here have died a little bit, but it doesn't particularly feel like this is a, I mean, a reactive spot. Who's at peace? Chances are, yeah. all the, if, all if not most of the family members of the children have since probably died. Yeah. So there isn't anyone like you know in the, in the room to tend like family. Got, to like, yeah, I agree with this part of the graveyard. It certainly feels like just. As you said, it's interesting. Is like I wonder if if the sightings and stuff were of the boys that died here, it's like since the rest of their family kind of joined them, mm. whether that put that chapter to rest. Mm. It's it's, it's kind of twenty without knowing the the children's exact names and things like that. Yeah. You, you wouldn't be able to link other graves to them. Yeah. That they are buried with. There are the family members. Yeah. I mean, again, it's like speculation because it is like quite a poignant subject. So I don't want to link as much as the story is important. I don't want to link <coughs> it to ghosts and say that yeah. they're haunting here. But at the yeah. same time, there's <coughs> uh, there must be a connection somehow. It's just looking like the amount of names on here is kind of staggering, actually. Yeah. Like every kind of sort of sixty centimeters, thirty centimeters, whatever. There is a name tag. There's loads of them. I didn't really notice how many there were in the day. 
Not picking up anything in the graveyard, we made our way over to the chapel itself, where a series of strange photos had been taken by another group when they visited the previous year. Is there anybody in this chapel with us? Did you used to work here? You're a groundskeeper or a sexton? There's a few people that still visit this place and I'm quite sure that there's someone who resides here. Maybe still looking after this chapel. Got a device placed on the floor there. I don't know if you're able to come over to it. You see this metal rod sticking out. If you touch that, that's a way that we can interact, hopefully. A way that will let us know you're there. At any point during the evening, if you can do that, it would be absolutely fantastic. At the same time, if you want us to leave, make it known, and we'll be out of here. We'll leave you in bits. There's some people that we know came in here, I think about a year ago, and they were taking photographs in here, and they're fairly sure they captured a photo of you. <coughs> I don't know if you were aware of that, or even if you're happy about that, but I brought a camera with me now, and I sort of that. Yeah, it's coming right by you. I brought a camera with me. I don't know if you're able to, show yourself on the camera. Let's have a look, just to, for the sake of um, uh, documenting it. Yeah, if you've got one. Put out to review photos. I'll be there. Yes, yeah, so that was that photo there. There's nothing in that, is there? No. And what I might do is I'll take two photos each time, in each place. Yeah. That looks so weird on the camera because there's no flash in here, it's only on the yeah. video. After a while we decided to split up into twos, with James and Lauren returning outside to the graveyard and myself and Sophie remaining inside the chapel to investigate further. Even now with two of us in here it's like, still feel perfectly alright. Yeah, I feel pretty relaxed. I think if relaxed is the right word. I wouldn't. <laughs> I couldn't chill out in here, but it's um, it's not spooky really. Anything you can do in here? There's just two of us now. I don't know if you can see us or know that we're here. I don't know what your perception of the world's like, but there's there's just two of us now. Um, James and Lauren have left, so it's just myself and Sophie. Don't know if you. Feel better with just fewer people in here, not crowding the place. Are you feeling up to this one? No, I was going to say, I've not really felt much at all Good yet. Oh, oh, careful. Bend it on. This is the darkest bit. Yeah. So yeah, we've just split off from Luke and Sophie. It's just me and Lauren now. We're out in this very dark bit of the graveyard near uh, where we first came in. Luke and Sophie are in the chapel over there. Oh shit! Lauren, da 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 da, something here. Showing the, showing the light here, there's something moved right there. I heard it. Yeah. I think... <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? <laughs> it was a cat. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I 
I think they found the cat. Brilliant. I think he's fouled his unders. I think he has. I mean, he that toy ball after all. No, there's no um, shadows or anything. So I can't even think, because I was thinking earlier, how would you go about recreating those photos? And they were taken live, like, because I actually reviewed it live whilst they'd taken it, you know, on camera. So I hadn't. Because so now I've looked at it myself, I can see that it blocks out your own shadow. Yeah. So there's no <clears> way you could recreate that unless it was no. Photoshop. And I say even if you tried, even if something, I don't know, flew in front of the camera, it'd be coming in from the side of the frame rather than just being completely in the middle. Yeah, it just can, there's nothing. So it's, I don't think you could fake it. No. I mean. No, it'd be very difficult to, and very difficult to do it, like, live on camera and then... No. Uh.